Well, hello again, everybody. Um, welcome to the third part of looking at this iconic tune, the, the Athol Highlanders. Uh, this is a version of it that, um, that is available free and easy to get hold of on the session website. Um, and of course, if you follow the first two videos, you'll see that we have um, not only adjusted the pitch of some of the notes, uh, most significant, significantly, we've adjusted the timing of the notes, particularly introducing the dotted rhythm to the three quavers. And of course, yesterday we added in the harmony based on the, the rules of harmony with regard to matching a chord to the notes of the melody. And for every for every tune that's out there, um, as long as it stays within the scale, then three chords are sufficient to harmonize every single note within that tune because all of the notes within the tune will all be contained within the, the three chords. In actual fact, of course, we've got four chords, we've got a G at the end, but anyway, that was looking at the, <clears throat> as I say, the timing of the notes, uh, altering some of the melody, um, and then adding the harmony. Now let's have a look at the, the rhythm of the harmony, particularly as it would be applied to, say, the left hand of an accordion. Um, so some, some sort of theory that we need to, need to go through first. Um, the most obvious, music is divided into bars by bar lines. You can clearly see the lines coming down, dividing the music into equal sections called bars by the bar lines. So bars and bar lines. The time signature tells us how many beats are in each bar. There's the time signature at the beginning, six, eight. That's half, half of the explanation. The top the top number tells us how many beats are in each bar. Um, it's a little bit more complicated with 6-8, but let's, let's go through. Hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be able to follow this through. So, in music, we have our notes. Notes indicate that we play or make a sound for a certain length of time, as opposed to rests, which do the same, but tell us to make silence for a certain length of time. Um, you will never ever come across rests in bagpipe music because the bagpipes do not play rests. They have constant flow of air and therefore constant sound. You'll never hear bagpipes resting. You'll never see bagpipe music with any rests marked in. So we can ignore them for the time being. Um, so our notes are the semi-breathe is just a note head, either on a line or in a space. And it's also known as the whole note. Um, because often in 4-4 four, four time, 4-4 four, four time being the most common time signature of all, 6-8 is quite common, but 4-4 four, four is incredibly common. A semi-breathe would fill a whole bar of the most common time signature. The minim which looks like a semi-brief, but has a stem added to it. The stem can go up or down. There are two minims equal to a whole note. Therefore, the minim is known as the half note. So again, in 4-4 four, four time, that would constitute half the bar, and that would constitute half the bar. And we would play that note for two beats and that note for two beats. The crotchet, as we know, is the quarter note worth usually one beat but that's as i say that's in that's in four four time that's in common time and the quaver there are eight quavers equal to a whole note it's therefore known as the eighth note and here what i've done is i've put four of them with the stems going up two of them with the stems coming down they can be grouped in fours and twos or whatever whatever the music requires and they can even be individual notes with little tails but when they're grouped together, the tails are beamed together, are connected to form a beam. 
Um, and then we have the semiquaver, or the 16th note. There are 16 of these notes equal to one whole note. Um, the word semi, obviously here, means half. We've got the quaver, the eighth note, the semiquaver, the half quaver, each quaver divided into two semiquavers, hence the 16th note. And of course, the more, the more observant will realise that if the word, if the prefix semi means half, which it does, then the word semi-breathe means half breathe. And so there must be a note, and there is a note, of course, called a breathe, which looks like a semi-breathe with lines either side. And so it's referred to as the double whole note. But you'll, you'll very rarely come across this note because it cannot be fitted into most bars, in, in, into most music. You need a, a particular time signature that we'll get onto in a minute. So, rhythm. This is, this is a question that I often ask people. Um, and the question is, what is the difference between the time signature 2-4 and 6-8? The answer is none. 2-4 indicates two crotchets per bar. The two, because there's two of them, the four, meaning quarter notes, two quarters. There are two crotchets in each bar. What does six eight mean? It means the same, two crotchets in six in, in each bar. But, <laughs> there's a but. The dot after the crotchet means that these notes are dotted crotchets. And that's hugely significant. We'll get onto that in a minute. Now, when, it, when we're dealing with rhythm, there are actually only two types of rhythm in music, what we would consider to be simple rhythm and compound rhythm. Simple rhythms include simple duple. Duple meaning two beats per bar. So examples of simple duple would be the 2-4 that I mentioned earlier, or 2 over 2. 2 over 2 would indicate two minims per bar. And it's sometimes referred to as cut common time. Obviously 2-4, two, 2-8. Two, you don't often see that, but uh, it, it, in theory it certainly exists. Triple means three beats in the bar, typically a waltz, um, or some... For example, a very slow dance known as the Sour Band was written in 3-2 time, meaning three minims in each bar. So three of these in each bar. 3-4, the normal time signature for a waltz. Three crutch in the bar. 3-8 would indicate three quavers in the bar. One of the most famous piano tunes of all, Beethoven's Furleys, has a time signature of 3-8 three quavers in the bar and although you can hear six notes in each bar most of the time it's because those six notes are of course semi quavers. Finally moving on to quadruple time, quadruple indicating four beats in the bar. Okay um, of course quadruple it simply means double duple. In theory the time signature four two um, you don't come across it very often. I've come across it only a couple of times. But of course, if you've got four minims in each bar, then you can come across a breathe. And that would fill the whole of that bar of four minims. However, four, four, four crotchets in the bar, as I've mentioned earlier, is known as common time. And often we just have the letter C instead of four, four. Four, eight. You do sometimes see that. Um, it is true that the time signature doesn't tell us how fast the tune goes, because, of course, the tempo indication does that. However, time signatures do give us a suggestion. The, the, the way that the notes are written um, does give a suggestion of sometimes of the need to slow down or sometimes to speed up. So, so there is a a suggestive element to the various time signatures. You know, in other words, you know, why have 
three examples of two beats in the bar. It is to suggest sometimes something that goes quicker, something sometimes slower. Same with triple, quadruple. So just as there are, there is simple duple, simple triple, simple quadruple, we have compound duple, compound triple, compound quadruple. And of course, as I was saying, two, four, six, eight, both mean two crotchets in the bar. The difference being that the crotchet is dotted in our six, eight time signature. So six, eight means six quavers in the bar, but not six quaver beats. It actually means two beats in the bar. And we'll get onto that in a minute. Just as six over four, yes, there are six crotchets in the bar. There must be six crotchets, but we consider that to be a two beat rhythm known as duple. Hence the time signature nine, such as nine, eight and nine, 16, that would indicate triple time and quadruple, four beats in the bar, a compound quadruple is 12 eight. Let's have a look and see if I can explain in a little bit more detail the various time signatures. So I said that the only time signatures that exist are duple, triple and quadruple, and the two types of rhythm, simple and compound. But what about something famous like Dave Brubeck's Take Five that has five beats in the bar? Well, of course, <laughs> it's actually simply a compounded rhythm. It's a bar of three followed by a bar of two. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. But rather than having to constantly change the time signature for every bar, if you've got a three and a two, and it's always going three and two, just, you can just make it five. Uh, that's, as I say, is famous tune, Dave Remix Take Five. Another famous tune, um, Pink Floyd's Money, uses a time signature of seven beats in the bar, which is one, two, and three, one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, one, two, three, four. If you listen to the start, you'll hear that quite clearly, the bass part. One, two, and three, one, two, three, four. And <laughs> in Bulgaria, I was chatting obviously recently with David Vernon. He was saying he's got loads of Bulgarian tunes that use this particular rhythm. Um, 1116. Sounds complicated, not really. It's a bar of four beats, a bar of three, and a bar of four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then that repeats over and over again. The important thing. The most important thing to, to remember about compound time, as I say, is that a dotted note is the one beat unit. The only difference, as I say, between two, four, which is simple duple, and six, eight, which is compound duple, is that in two, four, our two crotchets are undotted. In six, eight, our two crotchets are dotted. So obviously, why call it six? Why not have two mentioned in the time signature? Well, that would be impossible because a crotchet is a quarter note and a quaver is an eighth note. A dotted crotchet is equal to a crotchet and a quaver. It's equal to three quavers. A dotted crotchet is equal to a crotchet, a quarter note, plus an eighth note. Therefore, the only thing that we can call a dotted crotchet is a three-eighth note. And of course, if we have two dotted crotchets, we have two lots of three-eighth notes. Therefore, the time signature six over eight. When we add the left hand rhythm the obviously the most common thing that we do on the accordion and probably what the accordion was designed to do more than anything else was to provide a simple vamp where we play bass chord bass chord <laughs> So that was the bass and chord of A major. 
However, in a 6-8 rhythm, each beat is made up, as I say, of three quavers. The bass note on the first of the three quavers, nothing on the second quaver, chord coming in on the third. It gives this distinctive, if we play the left hand in a 2-4 rhythm, remember that's your ordinary crotchets, you would have a 1 and 2 and, 1 and 2 and. But in 6-8 rhythm, we have this 1 and a, 2 and a, 1 and a, 2 and a, 1 and a, 2 and a, 1 and a, 2 and a. And so here is the melody of the first two bars, the rhythm of the melody. Here it is undotted, as it was originally, and you can see how the, the bass lines up with the first note. The first note dot is dotted, the chord comes in on the, the, the added value of the dot. The next three quavers, the first of the three quavers get the next bass note, the middle note gets nothing, the chord gets the final note. Let me just play those two bars as written with what we would call the straight quavers, the undotted quavers. <laughs> Okay, so that's the undotted rhythm. Let me change it to my musette sound on the accordion. But of course, one of the things we did was to dot and dash the first and second quavers, and that's exactly what we've got here. We've got the dotted quaver followed by the semi quaver. I'll just quickly demonstrate this and then go and answer the door. So here is our rhythm as applied to the left hand of our dotted rhythm. I'll do that once more. Okay, I better go and answer the door. I think that's my next pupil. Catch you all again soon. Bye for now.